This is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. I wanted to take a few minutes to run through the process of planning a case from loading the diacoms to making a surgical guide. We received a support request today for such a video. I know we have a lot of videos on advanced functionality and we have webinars. We wanted to put one together showing the process flow in a few minutes. Loading a new set of diacoms is simple from file new project. You want to navigate to the diacom folder that's containing the DICOM images. There's some shortcuts on top that you could use to navigate to the relevant location. The software will also search the subdirectories of whatever you select. What appears on the screen is any DICOM series that it finds will show up horizontally. Select the one that you want to choose, press OK. The screen that comes up allows us to specify the field of view. Any of the relevant borders can be grabbed and dragged. And then the OK button should be pressed. The trimming plan is loaded. The slider to the bottom of the 3D view can be used to change the density threshold. The different renderings can be changed by going to presets. Usually the surfaces is the best one to be working with. Double clicking on the 3D view will open up our surfaces panel. Right now our CT scan is the only one listed there. If we import the model or anything else, it will appear there as well. We can see that the panoramic curve in the axial view is automatically drawn. If we want to make any modifications, we could grab any of the squares and make modifications. If you want to clean up any additional scatter or parts of the anatomy that's not relevant, simply click on the isolate button in the bottom right. Click on what you want to keep and anything not connected or touching to that part of the anatomy will be removed. You can also use the cut functionality to create a lasso around the area that you want to remove. Once you have the CT scan imported, you could go ahead and import, you could go ahead and import the model file import STL. You could select the STL model that you want to import. The model is used for guide fabrication design purposes mostly. Here you have the model showing up on the left side of the screen and the CT scan on the right side of the screen. What you want to do is hold down your shift key to mark points. I usually mark every other tooth with a point. Just place the point in the center of the tooth. When you run a rotate, just let go of the shift key. Use your left mouse button to rotate the model. And then I go ahead and once again, hold down the shift key and mark every other tooth on the CT scan. If you wanna hide these multicolor lines that represents the cross sections, simply go to view 2D and remove all projections. That gives a bit of a cleaner look. Once you have your points marked, you go ahead and click on the line. The software prefer, performs the alignment and the merge. We could see the outline of the model in the panoramic view on the right hand side of the screen. If we wanted to fine tune the placement, we could add a few dots on the skins. And that would improve the alignment if we weren't happy with it. We could then just press the line button and the alignment will be modified. Once the merge looks good to us, we could go ahead and press the OK button. And it brings us back to the software screen. There are additional functionalities to adjust the position manually or to do other types of uh, merging, but we're not going to get into that at this point of time. We could look a little bit more detail at the quality of the merge by running around by running around the arch. We want to look in the areas where the R teeth in the cross section view when we want to make sure the outline is tightly wrapped around the teeth. We also want to look in the axial view as we get closer to the occlusion. And again, we want to see that the outline of the model is tightly wrapped around the teeth.
Now, if we want to draw the nerves, is something we could have done earlier as well, but draw the nerves, what we want to do is identify the area where we have the mental foramen. I like turning on, in the 3D view, the cross-section projection, so we could see where we are in relation to the mental foramen. We want to find a 2D slice that has the entrance to the mental foramen and click on add a nerve. The add nerve functionality has a cool functionality called detect nerve. As in the image here, you want to click on the entrance to the mental foramen in the 2D view. And we see that the software detects the nerve itself and it shows up of course in all the different views. We could go ahead and perform the same operation on the other side of the patient. We want to click detect nerve again. Once I'm sorry, we want to click add nerve first and then detect nerve to make sure it's an individual second nerve and not connected to the first one. And here we have our nerve detection performed once again. If we want to modify any of the placements, we could grab the nodes in any of the views, grab and drag and fine tune the positioning. So we had our panoramic curve was drawn automatically, our nerves are drawn automatically. Now we want to go ahead with treatment planning. For this, we could turn off the model. We could see in the surfaces panel that now we have the additional surface of the model. We could hide this for the treatment planning purposes. We go ahead and select add implant. Here we have the Blue Sky Bio Implant Library, compatible with Strelman, Zimmer, Nobel, and Astro. We also have some other additional systems listed here as well. You want to select the correct jaw type, the relevant implant that you want to place. Here I'm going to pick one pretty much uh, at random and go ahead and place it into the treatment plan. The implant could be grabbed and dragged in any of the views, including the 3D view. It could be rotated. Here I see that it looks like we could go ahead and add a longer implant. So you could double click on the implant to bring up the implant panel. Or you could right click on the implant and choose replace. There's other functionality here. You could duplicate. You can make parallel implants. But for now, we're just going to replace the implant with one that's a little bit longer and this definitely isn't meant to be a clinically accurate video we're just looking at the functionality primarily at the functionality of the software okay let's say that's our proper positioning and here we have the implant we could check if it's in the bone lower the density threshold. Maybe we should sink that a bit deeper. Let's turn off that projection. And we can go ahead and grab and drag the implant. Another way of treatment planning, let me just right click here and, and delete it. The alternative way to start treatment planning is based on a virtual tooth. You could select add tooth, select the relevant tooth, or even hold down the shift key and select multiple teeth. And then here you could directly choose the implant that you want to place, or you could add it in later on. But if you choose it directly, either the implant that's there, or opening it up the box and choosing the implant you want, then you press OK. Now you're going to place the crown, and the implant's going to come along with it. You could left click in any view. And you're grabbing and placing the crown, moving the crown, and the implant is coming along with it. The notification, that red exclamation mark that we saw previously, was an automatic validation detection. We were too close to the nerve. That is also settings that we could change in the software. Um, so the red exclamation mark showed up. Here we can modify the placements in any view. We could also change the shape of the virtual tooth by grabbing the nodes. On the previous screen, there was also the option of small, medium, or large. But here we have options of fine tuning the size as well. Once you're done with the placement, you're happy with the treatment plan, then we move on to making the surgical guide. 
To make the surgical guide, what we want visible on the screen is the software guide tube, which we go ahead and turn on by checking the checkbox, and the model, which we go to the surfaces, we turn on the model, we turn off the CT scan, we can also turn off and hide anything that we want to view the toolbar up here. The icons with the red pluses add an implant, a nerve, a virtual tooth, and the ones without, it just toggle them on and off and hide them. Okay, so we could hide everything. We could hide everything. There we go. We could hide everything that we don't need except the software guide tube. And the model. Okay, the software guide tube is our brown cylinder. And what we have coming up from the brown cylinder is our printed drill stop. That's going to control the depth of the drill to make sure we go exactly to correct depth. At this point, we're ready to design our surgical guide. We're going to open up the guide panel. We're going to enlarge our 3D view so we have good visibility. We're going to show this process flow in normal mode. We have modes up here. Assuming that you're using the Blue Sky Bio direct cut drills. And the hand piece, we also recommend using the X-Cube hand piece, but we'll see we have the option to modify that. Okay, being in, in normal mode, we have a very simple panel. Essentially, we draw the curve, and I'm holding down the Shift key, I'm grabbing with my left mouse button. Whenever I want to rotate, I let go of the Shift key, I rotate, and then to draw again, I hold down that shift key. I want to identify the area on which the surgical guide is going to be fabricated. Make sure they include the software guide tube. You want a continuous curve. You zoom in and out with the right mouse button. That applies to any views at any point. But you want a continuous curve that goes back to the starting point. And then you go ahead and click edit curve. Here we're going to fine tune anything that we have. We, again, we want to make sure it's smooth and continuous. The software is going to automatically remove the undercuts in, in normal mode. And we make sure we're happy with the placement. If we don't like it and want to start again, hit clear curve. If we do like it, we hit create surgical guide. Here the software caught a problem for us. We want to make sure we're using the correct draw type. Now create surgical guide. The screen that comes up allows us to verify and to select which handpiece we're using. Okay, different handpieces allow different amounts of the drill to go into the handpiece and affect, and affect the depth. We could pick the relevant handpiece. Again, we recommend the Blue Sky Bio X Cube. And then we click save new settings. We could have don't show this message for the case or for two weeks. Choose what we want, click Save New Settings, and the software goes ahead and fabricates the surgical guide. While this is processing, it takes a minute or two, we have the ability to export the surgical guide to an STL for printing um, to generate a report. We just press the report button and it creates a PDF file. And order parts brings up the Blue Sky Bio website with the relevant parts, metal cylinder, implant, drill added to the shopping cart. You could remove items from the shopping cart there also if it's not relevant and allows for very quick and easy checkout. Change drill orientation, drill stop orientation allows us to rotate the green built-in drill stop. Um, so that option exists as well. Once the processing finishes, what we're going to have on the screen is the completed surgical guide. And we could export that to an STL for 3D printing. The export costs um, could be purchased directly from the software. The cost is between $11 and $20 per case, depending on the size of the package that you're ordering. And you could, if you don't have that functionality, if you haven't ordered the STL exports, you just go to File purchase STL exports. You could use a PayPal account or credit card and you could load up anywhere between six and 600 cases that you could use to export. Each time you use an export, it counts down and automatically keeps track. 
Something that's really cool is that the exports are per case and not ex per export. So if you're exporting multiple times from the case, either multiple surgical guides or the anatomy in a surgical guide, or you're redoing the surgical guide, you could export as many times as you want from the same case, and it only counts as one export. What shows up on the screen is the completed surgical guide. We could go back to surfaces, and here we have the surgical guide showing up. We could toggle off the model and the software guide tube and our implant if we like. And here is our completed surgical guide. If we go back to the guide panel, here we could export it, generate a report. The report contains some basic information and images and drilling depths. And we could, of course, save that and use that as well. So that's the process running through making a surgical guide from DICOM to surgical guide. If you're using a different implant system, then you'll have some different settings and you probably want to use the advanced panel in order to do that. Um, and if you have any questions, then contact us at plan at bluesky.bio.com and we will help you out.